Hi, and welcome back. Thanks for watching Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. We have a special video for you today. Motion for reconsideration. All right. So this was a special request. Guys, if you ever have special requests, legal related videos, if I think it's something a lot of people would benefit from, I will try to do a video time permitting. I'm super busy. But I want to talk to you today about motion for reconsideration. Without further ado, let's head to the Attorney Steve Litigation Whiteboard. All right, here we are. So today we are talking about the motion for reconsideration, okay? And I'm going to talk about it under the federal rules. Why? Because there is no federal rule. There is no federal rule that says... I have my book right here, okay? Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, okay? Yay thick. You can see all the rules in here. If you go looking for motion for reconsideration, you're not going to find it. But you will find two very closely related sections under FRCP, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, section 59 and 60, and I'm going to read those in a second. But basically, this has to do with you file a motion over here. Um, you file a motion, say it's for summary judgment or a motion to dismiss or whatever it may be, whatever motion you're asking for. There could be hundreds of different motions. And the judge reviews it and reviews the other side's pleadings and then says, you know what? Denied. Stamp denied. And that empty feeling in your gut. Oh, I should have won. What's the judge thinking? Oh, my God. This, I had all the facts, the evidence, the law. Everything was on my side. I need to do a motion for reconsideration. All right, before you get all excited, basically the law disfavors these motions for reconsideration. Why? They don't want to reconsider or reopen cases that have already been decided, okay? The other side's happy. They're celebrating. But there are limited circumstances, very limited, when there is a manifest injustice that would occur, changes in the facts or changes in the law and things like that. So let's take a look here, okay? Um, so your motion gets denied. You need to have proper grounds to bring a motion for reconsideration. Now, when I say the word manifest, I want you to listen very closely. You need something that was so obviously wrong that it needs to be changed. Manifest injustice. Alexa, please define manifest. As an adjective, manifest is usually defined as readily perceived by the eye or the understanding, evident, obvious, apparent, Alexa, plain. off. Obvious, apparent, that's what you're looking for, okay? If you're going like, well, you know, I just, he didn't buy my argument, it's not gonna work, okay? You need something like newly discovered facts, things maybe that you could not find and could not present at the time. You say, wait, judge, there's a brand new fact, and I, in my opinion, should be something significant, okay? Uh, like, you know, don't just come with, hey, you know, there's one new, the, the moon was actually half full that day. Oh, my gosh. No, that's probably not going to work. Newly discovered relevant material facts that would change the outcome is one ground. Changing in the controlling law. Say you file a motion to dismiss and the judge says denied, that's not the law, and something changes. There's a new Supreme Court case law decision that comes down. You may say, judge, there's a change in the controlling law. Please reconsider. That's a ground. Manifest injustice where the judge manifestly, just so obvious, made the wrong call on the law and the wrong call on the facts. But I'll tell you, be careful with these. Use these very sparingly. In fact, I don't think I've ever even filed one in 18 years of litigating hundreds and hundreds of cases. So use these sparingly, okay? And fraud, if you can prove fraud on the court and things like that, okay? So you need to have proper grounds. Now, these two sections I was talking about, one is section 59. This is after a quote-unquote judgment, okay? So if a judgment goes against you, the judgment entered, you have 10 days timely to file a motion for reconsideration under Section 59. Um, but a lot of uh, motions are going to come under Rule 60, and this deals with orders, orders that are not proper, orders that you say we have some of these grounds here. Timely under this section is within a reasonable time, but I would also encourage you to bring that very promptly. Now, let me read out of my book just so you have the final uh, word right from the book, and we'll, we'll leave it at that. So under, whoa, <laughs> hold on a second. Under section 59, if I can get my book here, all right. New trial, altering or amending a judgment. That's 
Section 59, okay, FRCP 59. You need to have grounds for a new trial, like I said, change in the controlling law, new evidence that was not available at trial, and manifest error law or fact, or to prevent a manifest injustice. So if you have those grounds and you have a judgment, you file it within 10 days, judge may hear it. Judge has the discretion to decide if he or she wants to overturn the decision or not. But again, I would not get your hopes up, um, but it's here if you need it, okay? And Rule 60, and now let me just read this. Corrections based on clerical mistakes, oversights, and omissions, the court may correct a clerical mistake or a mistake arising from oversight or omission whenever one is found in a judgment order, or other part of the record, the court may do so on its own motion or on it on a motion, with or without notice. Um, so you have different grounds. Under Rule 60, the grounds I've given you here are under Rule 59. Under Rule 60, there's a, there's a whole bunch. Mistake, inadvertent, surprise, excusable neglect, newly discovered evidence, fraud, things like that, manifest injustice. So they're similar, but check the code sections. If you get up where you really need to file a motion for consideration, I would advise you to look at these two sections uh, that could be very useful to you. So again, uh, judges don't want you to get a second bite at the apple, as we call it. We do not want to relitigate previously issued litigation. But if you have something that is so clear, so obvious, that you just go, this, something is wrong and I must bring it. But if you do it on all these little tiny issues where you just feel like it, it was a bad decision, it didn't go your way, it's probably not going to go so well. So that's motion for reconsideration, guys. If you have any other videos you want to hear, put them in the comments section. I appreciate all your comments, all the, all the great comments that you guys post. So keep up the good work. Don't forget, over here. Yeah, a little push. It's not going to hurt you. Thank you for watching. This is general legal information only, not legal advice. Also, if you have a state law, many different states will have some sort of motion for reconsideration. Check your state laws. I'm talking about federal here, federal rules of civil procedure. So check your rules on that. Also, check your local rules. You may be surprised what you find in there as well, okay? Guys, thank you for watching. If you want to share this video, go ahead, share it on your social media networks, likes, comments, and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get the future videos. All right. Thanks, guys. I got to run. Thanks for your uh, tip to get me to do a video on motion for reconsideration. Have a great day. No, I'm not really going to bill you. This one's free.